Hello there. Welcome to Carstead Partners Packaging Spotlight. Hi, this is Kevin Carstead at Carstead Partners. I'm here with Sean Skelly. Sean is the co-founder of Jetrion, and Sean and I go way back in the development and the use of, uh, of digital printing for, for packaging and for labels. Um, Sean, we're doing this, uh, this new video series on, uh, um, it, you know, kind of belying the, the facts and the myths about digital print for packaging and for labels. Um, you and I have talked about doing this for a long time. I'm, I'm excited to finally get it off the ground and, and to be doing it. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about in the series. What's, what's the purpose of the series and, and kind of give us some of, the, some of the overview of where we're going to go with it? Sure. And, and th Kevin, great to be here and, and really looking forward to uh, putting this together on Carsa TV and, and getting it out to the audience. I think at the end of the day, you know, a lot of things have changed over the past, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, digital has been talked about for a long time. And even if you go back just a few years, it's changed dramatically. And it's, I, I, think, I think there's a benefit here for the audience, for converters, for even the equipment guys to find out maybe from somebody who's been through uh, that period, you know, from the time we started Jetron 10 years ago till today, we had some ideas of where things were going to go. Where have they really gone? Where haven't they gone? Yeah. So I'll I talk to the pioneers with the arrows in their back, right? Yeah, exactly. We've got the scars. <laughs> yeah. We've got a lot of learnings, I think, that can, that can benefit from a lot of people. And, and a key thing is, you know, labels is just really an entree into the packaging world as a whole, right? It's where the technology is right today. You know, digital technology is perfect for this from a speed standpoint, from a width standpoint, uh, you know, from the types of materials that are printing through it, that, that type of stuff. Uh, but but it's, at the end of the day, everybody wants to get into the larger packaging area, and we will, and that will no. happen. There's no, no question about it. It's just a matter of when. But but really, what uh, at the I'm I'm a big digital fan. I'm not going to hide it. Always been unabashedly a digital fan. <laughs> and I think if if there's ways to help digital be adopted in a more effective way across all vendors, I don't know what <laughs> the vendors are across all different converters. That's really what the goal is, and I think that's what we're going to do in these in these videos. Great, great, great. I'm uh, I'm liking it. So kind of go through the the, uh, the the steps of it. You know, we're gonna we're gonna kind of hit a couple of couple of hot topics. What are some of the hot topics we're gonna yeah, hit? Yeah. So to, to break it down a bit, you know, we're gonna look at things like the market dynamics. The market itself has changed both from who's actually buying digital, uh, and that's an important thing. It's not just label converters anymore and packaging converters. Sometimes you have commercial printers yeah. sneaking in, if you will. So that's one thing. Understanding the market dynamics where they are today. Uh, you know, really looking at the technology and, and how that technology gets integrated and delivered and, and the decision making process, a little bit about ROI and stuff and stuff. So let me let me talk a little bit more about on the market dynamic side. If anybody's been to a recent trade show, uh, they're going to see that there are a ton of uh, confusion out there because of all the vendor choices. Now, people are literally paralyzed and look around and say, I don't know which to pick because they all look good or they all don't meet my needs or whatever. And I know I got to get into digital. I better move quickly. But so, so it's really kind of looking at the market and seeing how you can help uh, navigate that a bit. One is to help move beyond the marketing hype. I don't blame any of these vendors. I was one of these vendors. I think the hype is exactly what you need. You got to get out and there. You were, and you were very good at hype there. We had Sean. to. You we were really good. We, for good or bad, you have to get out there and let yeah. people know and persuade them and convince them. And we're past the awareness stage. This isn't just awareness like we were years ago. People are, oh, yeah, I've heard about digital, but I don't know anything about it. Now it's I've got competing hype, which is best for me. So let's talk a little bit about some of that. And I think that hype is actually helpful because it's an educational process. And then lastly is really on the market side is to peek into the future. Where is this uh, going? Where will the technologies take? When will the market actually uh, move beyond just having digital complementing Flexo into actually competing with it. That we're not there yet, and we're going to talk a little bit about what even some of the Flexo players are doing on the digital side. If if we go to the next kind of stage and talk about the technology, we'll try and demystify the technology for folks. Get on a common page. There's a lot of components that make up a digital press. Uh, everything from print heads from lots of different yeah. vendors with different specifications, the software itself to drive that, the RIP software. The UV lamp, something as simple as that. The transports, the finishing side. I mean, and and I haven't even mentioned one. What I think is one of the most important things, which is the ink or toner, the actual uh, materials, consumables that actually make the right, make the print right, happen. Right, right, right. So, so we got to look beyond printers, 
printer specifications. It's not enough. We've got to dive deep. You can't just say I'm a 600 DPI this or whatever. Let's find out what really we have there. And then, and then lastly is you now you have the markets, you know the technology. Let's talk a little bit about making a digital decision. What about that ROI process? You know, what is the reality of it? What do I need to factor in and consider when I'm, I'm looking at a return on investment for me? Um, you know, and what are the best practices once I've made my decision for implementation? Training. Who are the right personnel, quite frankly, to yep. actually run your press? Uh, you, it's not just uh, what you might think, which is I'll grab my best press guy and just put them on there. That hasn't always worked. And then realizing to, that there are lots of resources out there. We've mentioned some of the magazines. There's great trade groups like FINA in Europe or TLMI here in the U.S. But those folks are not actually help navigating. They're just providing a forum for vendors to share information. This might help to say, hey, there's other resources out there. Kevin, your organization obviously helps people uh, uh, on a consulting basis with yep. making these decisions. Yep. I've had converters contact me. Same type of thing. So um, I think at the end of the day, if I sum up the whole thing is, as a big fan of uh, labels and packaging, I'm trying to help accelerate that digital transformation. It's coming. Uh, the way you can help accelerate it is with some of this educational process. Yeah. Five to ten. Well, and, and just just to help people make decisions more effectively and more quickly, and and not having to sort through so much. You know, just kind of be a be the be the end of the funnel there, where where things pop out and they can ask questions. Exactly. And by the way, the nice thing about this, the, the mode we're going to do this, Kevin, is these five to ten minute videos. They're bite sized You'll watch them at lunch. You'll watch them in the airport if you're traveling. You got some downtime. It's not going to consume a whole day like yep. a conference. Yep. It's not going to consume even an hour like a webinar. Yep. It is bite sized You'll watch them when you want. And the great thing is, as your audience feeds back to you, here's some other things that I would really like to see us do something on. And I think you can help us with that by, you know, mentioning that whole thing and getting this feedback from people and say, hey, yeah. what about this topic? Yeah. Well, hey, hey, Sean, take, take a minute. We've, we've kind of gone through and brainstormed through some topics, you know, some right. of the myths, if you will, about what we're doing. Kind of share with, uh, with the audience with some of the myths and the topics that we're going to discuss. Yeah. Let me, I'll just go through a few very quickly here. One, for example, is the fact that digital has already conquered label printing. Is that really true? Well, you might think so because we've been talking about this forever, but the fact of the matter is we're still in the relatively early stages yep. and digital is only complementing. It's not, it has not conquered anything yet. We're not ready to move away from labels. There's still a lot of business to be done there. Um, another one is digital printing is only for the big guys. Yep. Not really. I mean, there's a lot of small guys who are agile in their decision-making process, and they've been able to get out front of others and actually say, hey, I'm going to take this chance and take this risk and make the decision quickly. Another one is that higher price equals higher performance. That's actually true no matter what you're doing. If you're buying a car and you're getting a Maserati instead of a Volkswagen, you always expect higher prices, higher performance. The myth is that higher performance is easily defined. It's not just speed. It's a lot of other things. It's whether it works on lots of substrates. It's whether how wide it is. It's integrated with MIS or finishing. So that's another one. Um, one of my favorites is this one that keeps a lot of people on the fence as a label converter. And you've seen it. I'm not buying a digital press until the digital ink price is the same exact as flexo price. That's not going to happen anytime soon. I will tell you for sure. That's a long way away, and that's not the right way to actually measure whether you should get into digital anyway. We'll do a five to ten minute slot on that. I think it'll be very illuminating to folks. Um, one other one is that, hey, I already have digital. I've made my decision. I've got a digital equipment vendor. I'm done. I just have to buy from them all the time. Maybe. Not necessarily, though. There's other. I, I have a lot of converters that I know that have bought multiple types of vendors' equipment because they're trying to do different parts of the market, and that's right. absolutely appropriate. Right. Right. Um, so we'll look at that and many more. Color management, application flexibility, MIS systems, converting and finishing, and whatever your viewers decide to send in and say, hey, do you have something about this? You know, and, and we can go research it if it's not something that we know ourselves first firsthand, or we can tell our experiences. So right, I think there's right. a lot of things here. Right. Well, so so here we are, standing out, looking over the looking over the sea of uh, of tranquility or untranquility, <laughs> trying to trying to figure out where the where the boat's going and where where everything is. I, I really like this slide, Sean. This is a great slide. I love this slide too because. You know, anybody who makes any predictions ever, no matter what it is, there's all sorts of perils. And this one captured for me the perils of making digital predictions in a sea of analog. 
And what you can't see is behind the guy is he was actually further closer to shore before on other rocks and made right predictions sometimes and wrong predictions. And that's probably me and you and every other person who's been out there. What we've done is say, hey, we've learned a lot in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Let's bring that information, improve our decision making and uh, forecasting uh, capabilities and share that information with it, with everybody out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, Sean, I think this is this is great. I, I'm really excited to be part of this with you. Um, I invite uh, you. Know, you had mentioned earlier. You know, I invite our, our viewers to uh, to contact us. Here's our email. Uh, contact us with ideas that you'd like to uh, to see run on the on on the thing. You know, some some content that you'd like to see covered. Um, watch us on YouTube. Here's our YouTube channel at uh, Karstead Partners TV. It'll be run in a number of other places as well, um, and uh, and that. So if you have ideas you want to you want to get out there, please do contact us. We're a resource, and uh, we're really looking forward to being part of this. So, right, looking forward to it, Kevin. It's gonna Thanks, be great. Sean. Take care. Thank you. Bye.